Welcome aboard the extraordinary Bering 92 as I embark on an unforgettable overnight stay with a few friends you might recognise. Nestled within the pristine Turkish coastline, we anchor for two days in a picturesque bay, experiencing firsthand the opulence of this robust, long range steel explorer yacht. In this video, I'll immerse you in the authentic essence of journeying aboard this remarkable explorer yacht, including a mini sea trial. So sit back, relax, and ensure you're subscribed so you won't miss my future videos. My adventure began under the chilly, drizzly skies of a London airport. Yet, a mere five hours later, I was welcomed by the vibrant allure of the captivating Kemir. Kemir is often called the Turkish Riviera, renowned for its unique pebble beaches and expansive marina. Just a stone's throw away, one can explore expansive remnants of ancient Greco-Roman architecture and witness the enigmatic ever-burning flames of a legendary rock formation. We arrived at the marina and were picked up in one of Bering Marine's high sukat super yacht tenders. This boat is really great fun and you will see it in action with Alexia at the helm later on in the video. By now you might have recognised someone who was also going to be on this short trip. Tristan Mortlock aka the super yacht captain was also invited by Bering Yachts to spend the weekend checking out some of Bering's amazing boats. Next to Tristan is Bogdan and if you live in Europe and are interested in buying a bearing, he is your man. Next to Bogdan is Alexi, the founder of Bearing Yachts. Next to Alexi is Tristan, a friend of Tristan, henceforth they shall be known as the two T's. After loading our bags onto the high suit cat, it was time to get going. <laughs> Believe it or not, at this exact moment in time, a gust of wind appeared out of nowhere and muffled what the super yacht captain was going to say next. But after the word subscribe, he basically said, subscribe to Yacht Boy, my favourite yacht tuber. Tidy that bow. In all seriousness, the two T's and Bogdan are great guys, and I was really looking forward to the next few days. And there she is, the one and only Papillon. Having made videos about Papillon in the past, using stock footage, it's gonna be a real treat to get on board this boat and film my own footage that I can then bring to you, my subscribers. I'm really looking forward to showing you on board this amazing boat. Stretching nearly 30 meters in length with a broad beam of 6.5 meters, this vessel has a sizable presence. She cuts through the water with a draft of just over 2 metres and has a gross tonnage of 183 tonnes. Twin Cummins QSM11 diesel engines roar beneath her decks, propelling her to a top speed of 13 knots. She most comfortably cruises at a leisurely 10 knots, boasting a remarkable range of 3,500 nautical miles at 9 knots, perfect for those long, unhurried voyages. After boarding Papillon, we headed down to the accommodation to unpack our camera gear and grab some dinner. If you want to know which camera gear I use, I have a link to my Amazon stores in the video description. Inside this Bering 92 Explore Yacht, you'll find generous accommodation for 10 guests and quarters for a crew of four. The master suite is located forward on the main deck and comes with its own private terrace. My cabin was the starboard forward one, as most of my subscribers know, I spent five years at sea on two frigates and an aircraft carrier. So when it comes to spending a night on the water, I am used to, shall we say, basic accommodation. I'll be honest with you, I was utterly blown away by the high standard and luxury finish on the Bering 92. I just knew that I was going to be in for a very comfortable night's sleep aboard this rugged steel explorer yacht. 
The ensuite to my luxurious cabin felt like something that should be in a five star hotel. There was lots of space and natural lights in this area and I could not wait to stand under that rainhead shower. One of the great things about staying on a super yacht is that you don't have to worry about running out of fresh water. Now we've finished having a look around my cabin, let me show you the owner's cabin. The unique full beam cabin on the Bering 92 offers lots of space and connects seamlessly to the boat's surroundings thanks to the large windows on the port and starboard sides and the forward bulkheads. The ensuite is huge and has his and her toilets with a shower and midship connecting the two. Again, the exceptionally high quality and luxurious finish was very impressive. This is the spectacular view that greets you on the port side entrance into the master ensuite. These large windows really do help you feel connected to the stunning seascape. But what about the owner's private terrace on the foredeck? Well, let's have a look at that now. As you emerge onto the foredeck, you're greeted by a U-shaped seating area with an accompanying table. Thanks to the high gunnels that protect you from the wind, it's the perfect place to come up and relax and enjoy a morning coffee. There's also some additional seating out here on both the port and starboard side of the access door to the master cabin. The stairs on the starboard side lead back down towards the cockpit aft so that the crew can come and serve the owner as and when needed. Let's head back into the master cabin because I want to show you another one of its standout features. On the starboard side of the owner's cabin, you'll find a stairwell that leads you down into this walk-in closet. Personally, I think this is a fantastic use of this space. There's so much storage space down here that if you wanted to go away on an extended trip, then bringing all of your essential items with you is not going to be a problem, thanks to the vast amount of cabinetry down here. The large mirrors use the natural light that comes through the portholes and spreads it across the space to make it feel inviting, spacious and airy. During my stay on board the boat, the owner wasn't on board, which is why this space is filled with linen and towels. Let's head back up into the master cabin using the really nicely lit stairwell. I think it's time for some dinner and I'm looking forward to showing you what we had to eat. And don't forget to let me know in the comments below regarding what you think of this master cabin. After a day of travelling, it's finally time to check out that rainhead shower. This is a moment that I've been looking forward to. And I'm pleased to report that the shower did not disappoint. I must have spent at least half an hour in here. But dinner is now served on the cockpit. The chef cooked up some fantastic food and it was time to sit back, enjoy a beer or two and chat about all things boats related with the two T's, Bogdan, Alexi and his friends. As you can guess, I really was in my element and it's only thanks to you, my subscribers, that this was even possible. After an enjoyable meal surrounded by great people, it was time to get our heads down. In the morning, I would be jumping aboard the Haisu Cat, as well as heading out to sea on the Bering 92. But only after taking a quick look in the wheelhouse and getting some shots of the Bering 92 at night, as she sits at anchor just a short distance away from the bustling local nightlife. So it's been a really enjoyable day. It's been great to meet the founder of Bearing Yachts, Alexi, obviously the two Tristans as well. But now after a decent meal, it's time to get some sleep.
After a really good night's sleep, it was time to get up and prepare for the day. I must admit, being so close to the nightlife, I thought that I might be kept awake by the noise, but in my cabin, I could not hear a thing. And what an absolutely fantastic view to be greeted with in the morning. But time to find the others. Morning all. Hello. What time do you chaps get up? We've been up for a couple of hours. Yeah, we've really, <laughs> we really seen trial bird tender. <laughs> Five yeah. thirty. You fell in. <laughs> One place I have not shown you yet on the upper deck is the flybridge. So let's head up there and take a look. The massive flybridge on the Bering 92 is a great place to socialize with guests or just sit back and enjoy the view. Thanks to the large solid hardtop, when the midday sun hits, you are protected from the sun's beating rays. If we had more time, then I would have loved to have taken out the jet ski. But we have a few things to cover this morning, including a sea trial and a blast out in the high Cat. Time to take in those fantastic views from the vantage point of the flybridge. Breakfast is ready, so I must head back aft along the starboard side deck towards the cockpit. The handrails and high gunnels on the 92 mean that should you be out at sea navigating through some big waves, moving around the upper deck can be done safely. Thanks to the wide beam on the 92, space on the side decks has not been compromised, so there is plenty of room and space to move around. The one thing I did not bring on this trip is my swimming shorts, so I missed out on a dip in the water, but thankfully Bogdan took the plunge for me. And what better way to start the day when you're on a boat like the Bering 92 than having a dip in the Mediterranean Sea. The breakfast on board was excellent and I only wish I could have fitted more in my stomach. The pastries were out of this world and this is precisely the sort of meal you need when you're spending a day on the water. With breakfast complete, it was time to fire up the twin Cummins QSM 11 engines, each one producing 1,000 horsepower. Although the Bering 92 has a range of over 3,500 nautical miles, today's voyage would be a quick blast around off the coast. My subscribers probably already know this, but when it comes to being at sea, I love punching through the big waves. There is just something about being on an Explorios like the Bering 92, a boat you know can handle rough weather, and experiencing the thrill of punching through the waves. And although there wouldn't be any gnarly conditions during our short transit, I can still spot the familiar sight of the white horses riding the top of the moderate waves as we headed out to sea. The port side deck leads to the galley and is a great place to witness firsthand how the steel hull of the Bering 92 slices through the waves like a hot knife through butter.
pilot's house of the Bering 92, equipped with a state-of-the-art helm station, is an absolute joy for anyone with a passion for marine technology. And indeed, I consider myself a fervent marine tech enthusiast. In my opinion, another standout aspect of this vessel is its whisper quiet ride, even when underway. Couple that with its top-notch stabilization system and you've got a smooth, seamless glide over the water. The large panoramic tinted windows offer great views of the nautical landscape. So I'm in the owner's cabin now, forward, and we're underway probably doing about eight or nine knots, but there's no vibration, there's no noise. It's a very calm, very relaxed environment. After experiencing how the 2.2 meter draft coupled with the vessel's stabilization system equated to a smooth ride on this 183 gross ton vessel, it was time to head back to our anchorage spot. Before heading back to London, we had just enough time to experience the thrill of the Haisu Cat with Alexi, Bogdan and the two T's before heading back to the marina. I would be more than happy to take my wife and two young children across oceans on the Bering 92 and being slightly OCD about sea safety, that is not a statement I make lightly. But the craftsmanship and engineering prowess at Bering Yachts, driven by Alexi's relentless pursuit of safety and redundancy, make this boat a cocoon of protection on the wild west of the seven seas. You only have to look at the level of detail and marine engineering in the large engine room aboard the 92 to appreciate how much work goes into designing and building a boat like the Bering 92. She is a credit to the designers and engineers at Bering who have turned the dreams of the owner of Papillon into a reality. I often hear people talking about the cost of a boat like the B92 without understanding just how hard it is to build a vessel like this, a home from home that has to withstand the true might of mother nature as she roams the world's oceans. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, if you've got any questions or queries, any comments which are left with a super thanks will always be guaranteed a response. So now we have dropped the hook back at our anchorage. It's time to go out on a blast with Alexi, the two T's and Bogdan on the high Sukat. So make sure you strap yourself in for a fast ride. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like because it really helps with its reach on YouTube. Who better to tell us about the performance characteristics of the high Sukat than the founder of Bering Yachts and Bering Marine, the man himself, Alexi. And make sure you stay tuned because once Alexis told us a little bit more about this boat, you'll witness him at the helm as we power through the water and carry out some sharp turns. So tell us about the design of the hull of this boat. Um, and kind of like the thinking behind it and the, the, the pros and cons that you explained last night in comparison to say a mono hull. Uh, yes, it's, um, it's a different type of hull. It's, um, um, the technology called hydrofoil supported catamaran. Uh, it's an asymmetrical hole like you see on racing cats. So it's very sharp vertical inner edges. Mm -hmm. sure. and so basically it's a mono hole with carb in tunnel of certain shapes, certain proportions with a, a foil yeah. between the sponsons, gotcha, which yeah. is not hanging below the uh, the kill. The, the kill. Yeah. So it's draw same like my own 18 inches of water. Right. So uh, you don't have any moving parts. It's a, it's a right here. This foil is right here. So and it's two small foils on the back for stabilization. So right. Really interesting. So it's a lot of technology packed into this, and yeah. we are not only foiling because this tunnel configured the way. So it's a big mouth. Like forward and then it's uh, the air packed into the tunnel so if you're running on the air cushion and we will experience today we have perfect weather for yeah. this yeah. we can run and the sign of it you start to feel like you're on ice yeah, like a car on ice you you shake your wheel and you start to float right, so, okay. however if you need a sharp turn 
if you need to turn sharply, you can do it. Yeah. Technology originated in South Africa in, I believe, in 1996. And uh, so I um, uh, got this company back in 2015. So and wow. we developed quite a few models. This is, this is the original model. We have a, um, this is like a tender setup. We have it as a multi-seater for sightseeing, uh, 12 passengers will have this as a rescue boat. Uh, and we have a cabin version, which is great for, uh, again, as a pleasure craft yeah. and as a, a government service. So it's look very sleek and very, very police-like. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And of course, this craft can chase, it's a good chase boat. Yeah. yeah so so. We, we achieved 72 knots on this particular hull with different engines. Uh, 72, 72 knots. knots. Well, wow. Yeah, the, the great thing that this craft is for the rough sea, you know, foiling technology is getting popularity now. Yeah. And um, it works fine at, uh, you know, like sea condition like this, yeah. but when the real sea come to play, it's failed. What's the... It's either too complex or it's not designed correctly. Sure. Our craft's working at any sea condition. Any condition. It's a it's a best craft you can... In, first of all, it's comfort. I'm not even talking about fuel economy. Comfort. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's what come to play first. What are the, the worst sea conditions you've had her in? How did she perform? I run her in five six meters sea. At what sort Very of speed? Very confused sea. I mean, it, along the waves you can reach forty knots. Yeah. I mean, it's I wouldn't recommend to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. It all depends on the direction of the sea, to the direction you're going into. Yeah. The speed. So, yeah. on, um, but of course, it's a, it's a boat if you push too hard you will jump you can mm. land wrong you know you have to yeah. use your head when running but it's it's but she's much capable more capable, she's capable much it, more yeah. capable way more capable capable than monocle mm. i would be afraid and especially cat, cat like classic cat no so yeah. this this behave like a monohull very predictably bank into the turn you can you you don't have this weird feelings like yeah where you, like you're, you're falling you're, skipping along you're falling water. out yeah, or yeah. you're skipping jumping like this mm. it's it's yeah. um let's yeah let's, let's do it. open her up while the drone's up Alexi, and we I have can... a quick question yes the engines i see they're at a, at a both at an angle yes is that because of the hull shape it is uh it's a symmetrical hull and we catch better flow of water when when they oh, position yeah. like this with 12 degrees inward okay if you're wondering what Tristan is wearing, it's a drone mask and it basically enables you to fly any drone in FPV mode. If you're interested in getting one, I'll leave a link in the video description. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah.
After blasting across the waves on the high Cat, it was time to head back to Papillon. And make sure you subscribe to my channel because in a future video, I'll be taking you aboard the Bering Marine 34. After packing up our stuff, it was time to leave the Bering 92 and head back to the marina. I just want to say a massive thank you to Alexi and Bering Yachts for making this possible and to Bogdan for facilitating everything. I also want to say thanks to the crew on board the Bering 92 who helped to make our stay such an enjoyable one. It was great to finally meet Alexi and to spend some time with the two T's on board the Bering 92. If you'd like to find out more about Bering Yachts and Bering Marine, then I will leave a link to their website in the video description. And I'd also like to say thank you to you, my subscribers and viewers, for watching this video. I can't wait to bring you more content like this, and it would really help if you give the video a like. As always, I'd like to say a massive thank you to my channel members for helping to support me as my channel grows. If you'd like to become a channel member, then click on the link in the comments below. Think of channel membership as YouTube's version of Patreon, and I'll be sharing some exclusive footage with my channel members over the next couple of days. If you enjoyed this video, then there's a good chance you'll enjoy the video recommendations in front of you now, so please feel free to check them out. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.